Previously on the bill. Did you see that? I was pushed. After Rashna left your place this morning, she was pushed off a walkworm. We have a description of the man who did it. You fit that description. I swear, I can't think why anyone I know would want me dead. It is her. Yeah. report. Well, we'll get a clear indication after the post-mortem. Poor woman. Let's get back to the neck, work on what we've got. Victor Stone, yes, his prime suspect and his heavy calcium. Might have taken over Nazi's business. We've been looking at a lot of time for drug dealing. But their alibis match up with the time of Reshner's disappearance. Mm, poor Naz. Looks like he's totally wrong about Stone being his wife's abductor. Well, if he's stupid enough to shoot Stone and get himself locked up, it's not surprising he might have thought he was responsible. Yeah, where does that leave us, Gov? Well, we've got Sarah Carr and Reshner's best friend. We're still trying to contact her. Sergeant Wright. Any joy? Well, we've gone for all the names and numbers on her contacts list, but Reshner's service provider was able to play us a deleted voicemail. It's the only message left in the last week. It's from three days ago. Hi, Reshner, it's me. We can be together. I miss you. Call me. I just want to see you. That isn't Naz. Who is it? Unfortunately, it's from a payphone, so no ID. But it's a new lead. Do you want me to speak to Naz? Yeah. Uh, and we need somebody to formally identify the body. Okay. Better break the bad news then. I'm so sorry. <gasps> Naz! I want to see my brother. Oh, right. I've got you a double shot. Any yeah. reason? Only that you're not your usual bubbly self this morning. All units from Sierra Oscar, robbery in street, now in Gunner Street. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 1, Sarah's dealing. It's only two minutes away. Oh, bet you I could make it in one. <laughs> Get you up. Uh, Were you robbed? Yes, you went that way. Okay, look, let's take a seat over here, shall we? Put yourself down there. Thank you. There you go. Oh, no. Tell us what happened. Oh, somebody tried to mug me. They tried to get my bag. I just froze and I couldn't. Okay, what's your name? Maggie, Maggie Carpenter. Right, Maggie, it's going to be okay. You'll uh, be all right. You're very kind. Oh, it just happened so fast. I was so scared. Maggie, can you describe your attacker for me? I think so. Right, OK. Well, we'll have a little look around, see if there are any more witnesses. But uh, are you up for making a statement yet? I don't know. I think I just need a minute to calm down. Oh, perhaps if we did it down at the police station. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And while we're down there, we'll get you to look at some mug shots, all right? Yes, I can do that. OK, that'd be good. OK. Am I getting over? Thank you. Yes, I'm fine. Where was she found? Her body was found in the river. I'm so sorry, Naz. I came as soon as I heard. She's dead, Ash. It's okay, Naz. It's okay. The body you found, is it definitely Reshna? We believe it is. At this stage, though, it's too early to say for sure how she actually died. What, what do you mean? We will need to do a post-mortem. Look, I, I need to ask somebody to formally identify the body. It's just something that has to be done, I'm afraid. Naz, it's OK. I'll go. <laughs> Boots. Yes. 
That's Krishna. Thank you. Hey, go, Maggie. Fine. So you hear about these things, but you never think it's going to happen to you. You ready? Yes. Right, can you describe the person who approached you? Yes, he was about 20. Tall, but not big. Um, kind of lanky. Looked like he hadn't shaved for a week. And he was wearing jeans and a blue shirt. And he... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get it all out before I forget it. Mm -hmm. Blue shirt. And trainers. Nice ones. And I noticed when he grabbed my bag, he had a scar on his hand about two inches long in the shape of the moon. Okay, uh, was he black or white? White, and he was wearing a baseball cap. I'm pretty sure he had brown hair. And he's left-handed. What makes you think that? Because that was the hand he was carrying the knife with. He had a knife? A kitchen knife, a big one. Well, you dealt with Reshna yesterday, so it makes sense that you're Naz's family liaison officer. Okay, I'll pan the visit, see what I can find out. And they're coping. Delicate situation. I can deal with delicate. Oh, you, you really shouldn't have gone to so much bother, Mrs. Duran. You're a guest in my house. Well, under the circumstance... Under the circumstance, it's good to have a guest. Well, I'm the same, you know. As soon as that doorbell rings, the kettle's on the boil. <laughs> Must be good to have your sons so close by. Yes, Ashraf is very good to me. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about Naz? Yeah. Uh, what would you like to know? Well, we're aware that Naz and Reshna weren't living together in the weeks leading up to her death. We're trying to put some sort of picture together. Uh, Naz and Reshna met through a friend. Um, they married for love. When Ashraf got married, we chose for him. Yes, I was introduced to Shaheen five months before. We only met the once. But we agreed to the match. They've been married for 18 years. And how long were Naz and Reshna married for? Um, it would have been three years in a couple of weeks. Look, I know this must be difficult, but could you tell me something about the relationship? Well, we knew they were having difficulty, but it was a real shock when Naz said that she'd left him. Please. We shouldn't be talking about this. No. I'm sorry. This is the initial report from the mortuary. Anything interesting? Well, it confirms the victim was definitely murdered. Marks on the neck, scars on the windpipe indicate she was strangled with some rope or some other material. So she was dead before she went in the water? Well, the pathologist didn't find any water in her lungs. So, yes, she was killed and then dumped in the river afterwards. Progress here, Gov. Well, we're making headway with Russian's phone records. And there's a couple of calls that could relate to our mystery man. Nothing from Sarah Khan? No, but it might be worth getting down to flat, see if anybody's seen or heard from her. The description our victim gave doesn't fit any of our known suspects, but she said she'd recognise them again if she saw him. Was she done? No, uh, she managed to keep hold of her bag even though he threatened her with a kitchen knife. This gives it sounds nasty, thank you. Yeah, now he's had a taste for it, he might try it again. This is some description, you know. I'm just bringing Mickey up to speed with that attempted robbery. Some psycho attacks a woman in broad daylight with a knife. Hang on, are we talking about the same job here? Yeah, Maggie Carpenter, Gunner Street. Because I've just spoken to an old couple who witnessed the incident. All they said was that it was two women struggling over a bag. Two women? Yeah, it sounds more like an argument than a robbery. I think Maggie's been a bit of a drama queen. She's still here? Yeah, she's downstairs. She's agreed to look at what's. And if I was you, I'd get her to go for a statement again. Sorry, um, I'm from Sunhill Police Station. I'm looking for someone called Sarah Khan. What's happened? I, I just need to um, speak to her. I'm sorry, I don't know her. I'm visiting the friend.
Maggie, this is DC Mickey Webb. Hello. Hi. Uh, do you want to take a seat? Well, I thought we were going to look at photos. Yeah, there's just a couple of things I want to clear up in your statement first, that's all. What, anything I can do to help? You seem pretty specific about the person who attacked you. Yes, well, I've got a very good eye for detail. Well, it's just that we've got a couple of witnesses saying that it was a dispute between two women, not a man and a woman. They made a mistake. It all happened very quickly. I'm not so sure. They seem pretty certain. I mean, you see, this man was unshaven, yeah? I'm surprised that these witnesses didn't pick up on this detail. Well, he was wearing one of those hoodie things. Probably they couldn't even see his face properly. Maggie, in your statement, you said that he was wearing a baseball cap. Yes, and a hoodie. Both, like they do. Both of these witnesses says that they saw two women. There's no mention of a knife whatsoever. Can you explain that? Well, the knife happened later, after he chased me. Maybe they didn't even see that bit. Maggie, we take a dim view of people who waste our time. You're clearly trying to hide the real identity of the person that you were arguing with, but the question is why? That's enough. Just leave it, okay? Excuse me? I'm an undercover police officer, and if you keep digging, you are going to ruin a six-month operation into one of the biggest stolen jewellery rackets that this country has ever seen. Hi, my name's Sarah Khan. I'm here about Reshna Duwan. There was a message left on my phone by Samantha Nixon. Oh, right, OK. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll get through. After she left Naz, she came to my place. She was devastated, but she said she couldn't stand it any longer. His drinking, his moods. Sarah, we know there was someone else. I thought I was the only one who knew. We have a voicemail message, and I'd really like you to listen to it and tell me if you recognise the voice. OK. Hi, Reshna, it's me. We can be together. I miss you. Call me. I just want to see you. That's Marcus Cosguy. You sure? Did he do this to her? Well, at the moment, we need to speak to him. She told him it was over. So who is this Marcus Cosguy? She knew him from way back. College, I think. Did you ever meet him? Just the once. He seemed nice enough. Quite quiet. How long were they actually seeing each other? They met a couple of days after Reshna left Naz. They saw a lot of each other in that first week. I was away a lot. It soon became clear that he'd been staying over. So she was sleeping with him. You said she ended it. Why was that? She realised it was a huge mistake. She still loved Naz. She really loved him. And how did Marcus react to that? He refused to accept it was over. He kept ringing her. Apparently he used to wait for her outside the flat. Why didn't she report him? She didn't want Naz to find out. She felt so guilty. We need to talk to him. Can you tell us where we can find him? <laughs> well, I've got the feeling Brother Ash didn't know too much. And Mrs Duran, well, she seemed more comfortable sipping tea than talking about Naz's relationship. Well, I'm sure they'll appreciate the support. Sam. Gov. Things aren't looking very good for our mystery caller, Marcus Cosguy. I ran some checks on Chris and there was a report of a previous allegation of harassment. Previous girlfriend tried to end the relationship, didn't take any action, didn't prosecute. But she believes that he's had keys cut to her flat and he's been letting himself in. That sounds obsessive. Hmm. Don't have a current address for him. But I've spoken to his old boss at the Canley Garden Centre and I'm waiting for him to send some snaps of a Christmas party. He says there's a really good one of Mark. There we go. No, I've spoken to him. This morning outside Sarah's flat. The woman I was arguing with, her name is Paula Wright. She's part of a gang of jewellery thieves who steal to order for clients in Saudi Arabia. Interpol have been tracking them for years, but with recent world events, terrorist funding and all that, Scotland Yard decided it was time to get someone inside. So, covert ops sent me in. Uh, so what was she doing in Gala Street, trying to steal your man back? I infiltrated the gang. I thought I was well in, but... Something spooked Paula. She was convinced I was wired. That's why she was looking through my bag. I mean, obviously she didn't find anything, but somebody saw us arguing. You lot turned up, she legged it, and I stayed behind to damp the fires. Because you didn't want to blow your cover? They've got a big job planned on her jewellers in the city. 
we're on the verge of lifting the whole team. If you'd picked her up, all that work would be down the drain. You do know we can check all this, don't you? Yes. So is your real name Maggie Carpenter? I'm sorry, I can't reveal that without authority. You know that. OK, so if you're working undercover, what's your handler's name? Piers Stormson. You can check him out at Scotland Yard, but don't blame me if they give you the runaround. I don't make the system. I just work with it. How can we check her out on Crimin? If she's an undercover cop, I'm the Queen of Sheba. Oh, he's starting to be taken in. No, it's not that. It's just... Look, I'm still going to check her story out on the system. Well, you did our phone Scotland Yard, but whatever you do, go cautiously, OK? You blow it around, leave it down. Rushner's phone records indicate he could have called her from several phone boxes, so we're looking at this area. And according to his old boss, Marcus worked in several garden centres in the past. Barrows Garden Centre, Burley Road. Right. Get your uniform, get down there, check it out. Not really into gardening, are you, Lewis? It's not my thing, Roger. Oh, I don't know, Lewis. I could just see you in a pair of wellies. Checking on your little grow bags. <clears throat> Here he comes. All right, my guess is he won't like what I'm going to say, so be ready if he makes a run for it. Samantha Nixon, do you remember me? I'd like a quick word. Don't worry, we've got you the morning off. What's this about? I think we'd better do this down the station. I need to know. OK. Where were you around midnight last night? I was in bed with a cold. Why? It concerns Reshna Dewan. Is she OK? It's bad news, I'm afraid. She's dead. No, she can't be. Right, listen, listen. We just need to, we just need to have a word. I need to see her. Mark, I need to relax. I don't Come believe on. you. I need Come to see her. Hey! Now that hasn't exactly done you any favours. Take him away. We need a confession. We've got no solid evidence to hold him. I'll get uniform down to his address. I'll try now, see if he can get saying anything. Right. We'll give Marcus half an hour to calm down, then have another go. Cheers, sweetheart. I'll get this one. Oh. I've been looking forward to this all morning. I hope it's not lemon sponge. Fine. I've just been checking on a robbery victim from this morning, and it turns out she's got form for nicking a lemon sponge from a supermarket. Why are you checking on a victim? She's got more stories than the Brothers Grimm. Her version of events keep changing by the minute. Well, maybe she's traumatised or confused. Old girl, is she? No. In fact, she thinks she's Donny Brasco. Now, if she claims she's Job, an undercover cop from Covert Ops, and get this, the woman that she was grappling with this morning during the supposed robbery is an international jewellery thief. She says she made the robbery thing up so she could maintain her cover. Well, you've got to give her marks for creativity. She must think we were born yesterday. Well, well the crazy thing is, Mickey's checking with Scotland Yard. I mean, he's nervous in case she's on the up and we blow a covert up. I mean, said that, nothing would surprise me with this one. So, where's your little partner in crime then? Sponging himself down. It's been a bit of a mucky day for our Lewis. First of all, he nearly sank in the mud at the riverbank this morning. And just now, he was sent flying at Barrow's Garden Centre and landed up in a bag of manure which split. <laughs> Did you get the guy that you're after, though? Well, I like to think that Lewis and I are Sun Hill's answer to the Mounties. Ah, so when you fall off your horse, you fall into... Uh, no, we always get our man. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> I do like a happy team, but the DCI gets his kicks in finishing your riffs early. Unfortunately, he wants you to turn over Marcus Cosguy's flat and he wants it done yesterday. All right, Sarge, good luck. Uh, how are you getting on with that robbery from this morning? You don't want to know, Sarge. Okay. Some light in him, man. Marcus must be the luckiest man alive. He's won about 20 top cash prizes. All he has to do is call the premium rate line. Nothing right here, Rog. Looks like we've got the full set. What? A necklace to match Reshner's earrings. Meaning? Meaning I'm on the ball and you're not. Reshner was wearing the same style earrings when she was murdered. Well, I guess that's a little trophy for Marcus. Let's get a crime scene examiner down here. Cool. 
I swear, I've never heard of this guy, Marcus. Well, we've got him in custody and he isn't talking. So if there's anything you know... I don't. Naz? There's a suggestion that Rational was close to him. What are you saying? We've been led to believe that she was seeing him. Who said that? Her friend, Sarah. It's not true. I don't know any Marcus Cosguy, and nor did Reshna. You think I did it, don't you? Why would we come to that conclusion? I've got no alibi for last night. My boss told you I was in bed with the cold all day. Apart from a couple of empty flu packets in my bin, there's no proof I'm telling the truth. Reshna's flatmate told us it was over between you, but you continued to try to contact her. We have a recording of a message that you left her three days ago. Three days ago, Marcus. And she told you to stop phoning her. I loved her. I'm showing Marcus exhibit RV1. This necklace was found in your flat. I gave it to her as a present. Reshna was wearing the earrings that matched this necklace at the time of her death. I took it back from her after we split. Can anyone verify that? Reshna's husband. Naz. He says he doesn't know you. He threatened me. When? He saw me take the necklace and worked out about me and Rash. Well, that's very strange because Naz swears he doesn't know anything about you. He's lying. I'm a filthy black man who's been sleeping with his wife. He didn't like the fact his wife was with a black man, did he? Start looking at Naz if you want to find out what happened to Reshna. So do you think there's anything in what Marcus says? Hard to say, really. I know there can be racial tensions with extremely traditional families, but... Well, I suggest we tell Naz we know he's been lying about Marcus. See how he reacts. And more lies, I expect. Now, the question is, what's he got to cover up? Sir, I thought you'd want to know. The CSA reports in. They found a few strips of paint on some concrete at the scene, near where the body was found. The forensics know the origins? Not yet, but they'll course the ID as soon as they know. Thanks, Nicky. Let me know how you get on the prison. Please tell me you've caught my wife's killer. I'm afraid not, Naz. Take a seat. I've spoken to Marcus Cosguy. You know, the man you said you don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to find out who murdered your wife. I don't... You need to start telling me the truth. I don't know any Marcus Cosguy. Really? That's not what he says. He says you saw him with your wife. He was taking back a piece of jewellery you'd given her. And that you threatened him. Have you any idea how that made me feel? Where and when did you threaten him? I saw him around at the flat where Reshna was staying. I followed him to his car. So you admit you threatened Marcus? It was hardly a threat. I told him to stay away. She was still my wife. And what did he say to that? He said I didn't deserve her. Said I had no right to stop him seeing her. Marcus says you have race issues with him. The only problem I had was the fact that he was sleeping with my wife. So the fact that he was black didn't concern you? <sighs> Are you suggesting I'm racist? Just what Marcus told us. Is that the only time you spoke to him? Yep. You tell me the truth, Naz. I swear I never saw him again. Do your family know about Marcus? They know nothing about it. Hi. Maybe I am the Queen of Sheba. There is a Maggie Carpenter on Crimin. She stole a lemon sponge cake from a supermarket in 2004. Well, she lives in Aberystwyth and she's 83 years old. Well, our Maggie didn't. She won't use her own name. True. How'd it go with Scotland Yard? It's hard to say. 
They haven't confirmed or denied that this Pierce Stormson exists. Typical cobalt ops, too secretive for their own good. They told me to leave in the details, they'll get back to me if he exists. So what are we going to do? I mean, we can't keep her here forever. She's the victim, maybe. Excuse me. Uh, Di, I believe you dealt with a robbery on Gatter Street this morning? Something like that, yeah. Oh, well, the thing is, a woman was running in Meredith Jones. She reckons her handbag was snatched on Gunner Street this morning at 9.45. That's the same time as the original shout. Why didn't this Meredith report this robbery earlier? She was on her way to an interview. Some big job in the city. Thought it was more important than her handbag. Maggie, you tried to get hold of your handler at Scotland Yard. You did? And how did he get on? He doesn't exist, does he, Maggie? Why don't you start telling us the truth, eh? Starting with why Meredith Jones has reported her bag stolen from the same place, same time, that you were seen arguing with another woman. Can you confirm? Is this your bag? Of course it is. I know my own bag. Right, so if I take a look inside, I'll find a credit card or a driver's licence with your name on it, yeah? Surprise, surprise. Meredith Jones. Don't tell me that's your undercover name. We do Meredith Jones's bag then. Huh? Oh, well done. It's a fair cop. What? You got me. I confess. My crime spree is at an end, thanks to you. What? So you're saying you're a mugger now as well? You caught me with the bag. You assumed it was mine. I thought I could get away with it if I kept the pretense going a bit longer. I'm sorry if I wasted your time. Sorry doesn't cover it. I needed the money. I'm behind with me, Renault. Sorry, I'm interested. Maggie Carpenter, I'm arresting you for theft. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Can I make a phone call? Naz admitted he knew about Marcus. So why was he lying? Well, I think he thought he failed as a husband. I just had a call from Long Marsh Prison. There's been an incident involving Naz to one and his brother. I'm going to get back down there. I'll come in with you. Now, apparently he called Ash just after I spoke Excuse to him. Sir. You're right. So, thanks for the tea. Um, and they agreed to a visit on grounds of compassion. Do you think it's linked? Well, the officer said it all kicked off in Bengali, so he didn't have a clue what it was about. You sure don't get it? I mean, it's not as if they were chatting for long, is it? Mm. So what did they talk about? I lost it with Ash, all right? No, it's not all right. He's my brother. We had an argument. Oh, come on, Naz. It was a bit more than an argument. As I said, I lost it. So what did you talk about? Leave me alone. Well, you called him on the telephone. You must have had something you wanted to say to him. He's my brother. We talk all the time. He's very supportive, is he? Yeah, always. So why did you attack him? Please! If Ash wishes to make a complaint against me, then I'll answer your questions. Until then, I don't want to talk about it. Maybe Ash will be a bit more cooperative. So now I found out about Reshler's affair with Marcus, but didn't tell the family. Mm, now that's the bit I don't get. All right, let's talk too much about Marcus. See if he knows his outburst had anything to do with the affair. Sam? Oh, a bit of a scratch. Someone looks pleased to see us. Mr. Duane, do you mind if we have a quick word? That's all you people ever want, isn't it? A quick word. We heard about your run-in with Naz. Yeah, he's got a temper. Yeah, well, we saw that on the CCTV footage. He looked very nasty. He was upset. Why? That's private. You know, it's interesting you say that Naz has a temper, because that's the second time we've heard that today. Who else have you been speaking to? Marcus Cosguy. <laughs> Am I supposed to know that name? Well, Naz says you do. In what context? In the context of his affair with Rashna. You know about this, don't you? No. That is my brother's business. If he's happy to discuss it with you, then fine. But I'm not. Not here. Not in front of my mother's house. Now, please go. I noticed you got a scratch on the back of your car. So where'd you get it? I went over a speed bump the other day. Where? I can't remember. What do I reckon? He's lying. That's why I think. So, an ex-lover with a previous allegation for harassment and a family closing rank. I'll tell you what, if you crack the duans, the drinks are on me tonight. Deal. 
I'm wondering whether those scratches on Ash's car has anything to do with it. Garvenny news on our suspect, Marcus Koskai. He's been bailed after interview. Well, even though he assaulted young Lewis here, yeah? look, Grandal is protecting you, yeah? We haven't got <laughs> enough to charge him. All right, so where does that leave us? Good question. Good question. Yeah, but no answer. You know what I mean? Mickey. Yeah? I've just had Meredith Jones in. You're not going to believe this. What now? She didn't pick Maggie out of the video, I You've got to be kidding. No, I showed her was, but she picked out a known offender who's recently been active in the area. I've put out a call to have her picked up. So where does Maggie fit into all of this? First she's a victim, then she's an undercover cop, then she's a thief. Now she's none of the above. Oh, she's a liar. Yeah, I think we've established that, haven't we? No, I mean, she's a compulsive liar. She can't stop herself. Yeah, I couldn't face going back to Maggie, so I rang the number that she used for a phone call. Turns out that it's her sister. Her sister's not surprised that Maggie's been giving us the runaround. Apparently she's been a compulsive liar since childhood. What are you saying? Well, it's not a clinical condition, but she just can't tell the truth. I mean, her sister assumed that it was just another one of her stories. I mean, she was quite shocked when she found out it was the truth. But that doesn't explain how Maggie ended up in the handbag, does it? That's why I came to you. Well, looks like Maggie can stick to reality long enough for us to sort this out, eh? Come on. Maggie, we've just spoken to the woman whose bag you had. She identified someone else taking it, not you. We also spoke to your sister. And she told us she had a bit of a problem with the truth. Now, we know it's difficult, Maggie, but could you try really hard and tell us what actually happened this morning on Gunner Street? I've been under a lot of pressure recently. My husband has been diagnosed with cancer, and we don't know how long he might have to live. Your sister also told us she was single, Maggie, OK? So don't indulge us in another one of your fantasies, please. Come on, Maggie. Our patients ran out a long time ago, but soon we'll be thinking of charging you with wasting police time. I saw this woman being mugged. I chased after the robber. She was only a girl. I grabbed the bag. Then there were flashing lights. You assumed I was the victim. The woman who'd lost the bag had disappeared. I went along with it. I couldn't help myself. You were being so nice. Would you recognise this young woman again? Yes, I think so. Are you sure? See, we've arrested a suspect, Maggie. Would you do a video ID for us? Oh, yes, I'd love to help. Maggie, listen. No lies this time. You've got to start telling the truth. No problem. Trust me. Well, that's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? Let's get forensics down here and see if it matches Ash's car. Yoo-hoo! Are you looking for something? DCI Meadows, Stone Hill. There was an incident here and we're looking for evidence. Well, the car got stuck on the slipway last night. The scraping sound woke me up. Did you actually see anything? Dark car? Black, maybe? I didn't see the driver. Don't suppose you got the make of the car? Or got the number plate written down? Could have been a Mercedes. I mean, I'm not sure. I ride a bike. <laughs> Thanks. Been really helpful. Yeah, like to do my bit. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. Well, no wonder Ash clammed up. Well, while we're waiting for the forensic on the paint, let's get some CCTV footage. See if we can get a still of Ash's murk. You know, I'm thinking maybe we should arrest Ash now. Get him in and apply some pressure. But the evidence is still quite circumstantial. I've got a feeling about him. Let's take a punt. Get him in an interview room, make him sweat a bit, and see if he comes up with something new. Well, I suppose it shouldn't be too long before we get forensics on the car paint, and the CCTV might give us something, so... Nicky, I need some officers to make an arrest. No problem. You can just watch the drive in case it makes a break for it. Yeah? 275 from Sierra Oscar. Can you get word to DCI Meadows? The pathology. Ash Duan, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Reshna Duan. You what? don't have to say anything. They may harm your defence. No, you can't you can't you can't can't Something you'll let your line in court. Anything you do, sir, may be given you evidence. Gov, just had a call from the station. The pathologist report just come back. Reshna was pregnant. I've done nothing wrong. No one ever has. Gov, can we delay this interview with Ash and pay Naz another visit? Well, it wasn't exactly helpful last time. No, I know, but once he realises that Reshna was pregnant, he might actually open up about this argument with Ash. That's good thinking. Yeah, let's do it. See you up front. Right. Mr. Duan, comfortable? Of course, Gov. 
Right, we're going to let him settle in for a bit. But in the meantime, I've got some CCTV that I want to check in. Thank you, Gov. Right. Well, I don't know whether you've heard, but we've arrested Ash in connection with Reshner's death. You've got it wrong. It's got nothing to do with it. Someone saw his car where the body was put in the river. Why did you attack Ash? We've been over that. Yeah, but you refused to answer our questions, didn't you? Why do you keep on at me and my family? This isn't about persecution, Naz. There's something you ought to know. Reshna was two months pregnant. It must have been your child. I said it was Marcus's. I guess he knew about the affair. I knew he wanted me to tell him, but I couldn't. We never spoke about it. It was... It was bad. Until earlier today. I needed to ask him. Is that why you called him? I asked him, did you do it? Followed her to Sarah's one night and saw her with Marcus. I asked him again, did you do it? She did it. She did it to herself. That's what he said. This scratch on the back of your Merc. Now, you said you got it on a speed bump. That's what I said. So, if I was to tell you we have a witness who saw your car down by the river in the early hours of this morning... I'd say it was dark and that your witness got it wrong. So, where were you between the hours of 12 and 3 a.m. this morning? I was in bed with my wife. And she can confirm this? I'm guessing she was asleep. So, assuming our witness has got it wrong, how do you explain the fact that the scratches on your car correspond to the marks on the ramp down by the river? I have no idea. We'll have forensic evidence, Ash. Look, I've already told you. I was in bed with my wife. Who was asleep? We've spoken to Naz. She did it. She did it to herself. That's what you said to him, isn't it? And that's why he attacked you, because he worked it out. I don't know what you're on about. Naz told us. You admitted it to him. You're lying. So how do we know what you said, then? Naz is a liar. Oh, Naz is a liar. We're liars. We have a witness who's a liar. Funny, that. I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? We've clearly got it all wrong. You might as well enlighten us, Ash. Your brother's wife was pregnant, and you told him the baby was Marcus's, didn't you? You found out about Reshner's affair by following her, didn't you? That's pretty calculated, isn't it? But then again, your family honour was at stake. <laughs> That's what this is about, isn't it? She walked out on him. Reshna was having an affair. She walked out on him because he's a sad man who drinks too much. And he watched his business go down the drain. She brought shame on our family. As you said, she did it to herself. My brother tried to kill himself because of her. And that justifies killing her and dumping her body in the river. We offered her everything when they got married. We even gave her a piece of our land in Bangladesh. You're trying to say this is all about land? No. This is about the disrespect Reshna has shown our family. You followed her. You spied on her. You knew she was pregnant. And you murdered her. You would never understand. Make us understand! I had my fingers around her throat. She pleaded. She pleaded for her life and the life of her baby. I thought it was Marcus's. You didn't let her try to explain. Reshner dishonoured our family. He didn't do it. Reshner was strangled with a piece of material. It was in the pathologist's report. That's a cover-up. Absolutely. Yeah. You already finished with him? He's admitted killing Reshner, but we know he didn't do it. Oh, then I've got something which might explain why. Thanks, Roger. 
Well, that is clearly Duane's mother in the passenger seat. Take a seat, Ash. Got something to show you. The interview recommencing 1659. I've shown the suspect some stills taken from CCTV footage of Frankham Road at 0252 hours. Can you confirm that that is yourself and your mother? Yes, it is. How did you kill Rashna? I strangled her. I told you. How? I grabbed hold of her neck. She struggled, but I held on until she stopped breathing. You weren't even there, were you? The post-mortem, Ash. Rashna was strangled. But whoever did it didn't use their hands. It was your mother, wasn't it? She's there in the photo with you, Ash. She helped you dump the body. My mother began shouting. She said that I was weak, that I was like Naz. What about our family honor? Reshna was pleading for her life. It was uh, horrible. My mother just got angrier. I couldn't stand it. I, uh, I hit Reshna, uh, knocked her out to stop her from shouting. And then I left her alone in the room with my mother. And that's when it happened. Your mother killed Rashna. Yes. Carl, do you mind if I don't make the arrest? Well, after all that hard work. I think someone ought to tell Naz. Can we come with you? It's fine. Right. I'll deal with Mother. Ash told us what happened. It was your mother. She killed Reshna. I loved her. I know. It's my fault. No. No, it, no, it is not your fault. Why did you stop me yesterday when I tried to kill myself? It's my job. Is this what you saved me for? Still here? Yes, Gav, it's been a long day. Good result, though. Mm, for us. You thinking about Naz? Top of everything else, the poor bloke's looking at a prison sentence now. Well, I'm sure they'll consider his case favourably. You want to leave that till tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, damn, my car, I completely forgot. What? But it's at the garage. I was supposed to pick it up at six o'clock. Well, I'll give you a lift. I'll have a quick drink on the way. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. So I'm on the call later today. Yeah. These little kids come up with some time. Next time on The Bill. This is Beth Green. It's her first day. Stop! Police! Stop! Police! They paid for a baby. They were desperate and they were manipulated. Any developments while we're out? Yeah, the DCI and the DI getting hitched.